Uh, um, I'll finish telling you today about triple integral. Um, I think I'll finish creating the exams by Thursday. Uh, so once I have done that, I'll send you like an announcement. I have already created like half of it, but I mean, so far they're pretty good. But yeah, once that has been graded, I'll let you know. Um, okay, so the last topic that we have to uh, cover around triple integral is, uh, is spherical coordinates. And once I have done that, what I'll do is like some examples that, you know, how to set them up in Cartesian or cylindrical or spherical so that you can, um, you know, see the difference be between the different methods. But um, spherical coordinates can be a bit tricky. That's probably the uh, most difficult type uh, of coordinates you can use. So it just takes a bit of time to like process the, the definition of some of the variables, especially one of the two angles, because the other one is more or less the same as the one in cylindrical. So, Uh, okay, so basically the uh, the idea in spherical is that uh, you have a point x, y, z. Okay, and the first part kind of uh, works similar to polar coordinates. So you're going to define a variable, uh, which is the analog of R from polar, which is just the distance from the origin to that point. Okay, so that variable is called uh, rho. And uh, one of the confusing things here is that there is a little bit of different terminology if you go online and check other textbooks and things like that. So, you know, it's kind of like for this type of example, um, uh, topic, it is better to stick um, more with what the book says or like examples that use the same notation because they do vary a bit uh, in notation. So for example, there are places that where this gets called R, but that's confusing because R is already being used for polar coordinates. So uh, those are the type of, of things that you have to keep an eye on if you want to check things online. So rho, um, um, again, this is one of the Greek letters, which looks like a P, but it's more like curly, curled at the end. So this is the distance from a point to the origin. So it's just like, uh, you know, the distance is like the 3D Pythagoras theorem. So that is just uh, the square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Okay, so that is what rho is. And then, um, so that, this is, like, you see, it's kind of like the analog of R because R is just like the root of X squared plus Y squared. So in that sense, it's like a generalization of R of, uh, of polar. Okay, so then if you have the point in space, this point has like a shadow on the x y plane. What is a shadow? Like that just means like, you know, you bring this point to height to have height zero. So you just move it parallel to the z axis. So it's just x comma y comma zero. Okay. And that point, like, because it's now on the x y plane. has a distance on the xy plane, um, you know, from, from the origin now, and that distance is just a regular r, okay? 
And so uh, what you do in spherical is kind of like keep track of, of the regular angle in polar coordinates. So there's this angle here, which is the theta from polar. So the other variable in spherical coordinates is called theta, theta but that just means the same as before. So theta is the angle from, uh, so the angle between the x axis and the, and the shadow point uh, x, y, zero. Okay. And so this one goes from zero to two pi, for example, like just as before, because it's the same as, as, as the previous um, theta that we have been talking about in polar coordinates. The theta is still from zero to two pi. Okay. And the last thing in spherical, so in spherical, so, uh, so far we have rho, theta, and the last thing that you use in spherical is like a second angle. So a spherical coordinates, it is closer to, you know, like on cartography or uh, geography, where when you talk about latitude and longitude, it's kind of like an, a version of that together with this uh, variable for the distance row. So what's happening, going to happen here is that there is an angle between, so theta is uh, between the X axis and the shadow point. Okay, and there's going to be a second angle, which is between the z-axis and the actual point x, y, z. And this is like maybe the one that's a little bit confusing, and this is called a p or phi. So, so this is going to be the angle between um, Okay, um, and I'll show you this uh, from like an animation in a moment. The convention here, which, um, you know, the convention for this angle is that uh, it is zero, at kind of like in the North Pole, so at the positive six, Z axis, it becomes pi over two at the equator, which is the X, Y plane, and it is pi at the South Pole or the negative Z axis. So let me write that down explicitly because it's very important. So this angle is zero at North Pole, or uh, which is positive C-axis. Then pi over two or 90 degrees at the equator. So X, Y plane. And pi or 180 at the South Pole or a negative Z-axis. So uh, the way you have to think about this angle is that it starts at the North Pole. If you thought about this like on a sphere, it starts at the North Pole, comes down until you get to 90 degrees, which is the equator, and then it keeps coming down until you get to 180, which is at the south pole. So this angle, and you'll see why, this angle is actually between zero and pi. So for this angle, you don't need to go to um, 360 degrees. You only need 180 degrees. And I'll show you that in a minute with the animation. Does that make sense so far so good? Uh, any questions about this? So let me see if I can show you what this looks like.
So So in this animation, you know, uh, you have a point and I'm this is going to be specified by changing row, data, and feed. So for example, when I change row, which is what I'm about to do, you see like the distance uh, between the point and the origin uh, increases or decreases depending on, on what you do. So changing row literally changes the length, right? Changes the length of this uh, line segment. So changes the hypotenuse if you think there's like a right triangle in this picture that I didn't draw, but it changes the length of that hypotenuse. Okay. So rho is like R from polar, but it's kind of like the 3D version of R or the three like the version of R in 3D space. Okay. So that is um, you know, this is what uh rho is. And then uh, what happens with theta? So theta is still, you see like the angle between the, the shadow, which is this segment and the X axis. So changing theta just changes uh, the angle of this shadow, which we'll, you'll see here. Uh, uh, so again, I'm varying the theta and it just, uh, you know, changes in the same way as it did like in, in polar coordinates. So theta is really the same angle as in polar. I have to go to 360 degrees, you know, to go through the, all the quadrants. Um, just that in this, I think in this animation, the convention is also to use negative angles for theta. But you know, if you know, ignore that, like it is the, the same as in polar coordinates. And C or phi, um, that is the other angle. So spherical is characterized by having two angles. Um, and what I was telling you is that it is set up so that it becomes zero at the C axis, at the positive C axis. Oops, sorry. So let me change the P. Okay. So it starts at zero along the C axis, which if you had a sphere, that's why you would think, oh, it's like kind of zero at the North Pole. So let me just put the sphere to uh, make it more clear. So, and then you, change the value for phi and you see as you start changing the value for phi you get closer and closer to the equator or to the x y plane so until and, the, and for that you need uh, 90 degrees to get to the equator in fact you can see i don't know if you can see here the 90 degree angle and then uh the phi gets uh, keeps increasing 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 until you get to the negative phi axis or the south pole okay so uh, that is why you need um, the angle to go from zero to pi because the theta then allows, you know, let me put it here. You know, by changing the theta, you can use the theta to kind of put the point in any of the four quadrants, you see, with manipulating the theta. And then you only need the phi to put it like above or below the equator. So that's uh, why uh, only. Uh, it has to go here from zero to 180 because uh, the 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 feed tells you whether you are above or below the equator and the theta tells you in what in which of the four quadrants the, the shadow lies. So maybe I should write it down on the board uh, because it's kind of like a useful thing to remember. So well I'll I'll write it in a second after I show you the next animation unless there are any questions. Yeah. Oh sorry, yes, excellent. Thank you. Oops. That's a good point, yeah. Good, thank you. Uh, yes, it is in Thanks. Um, in general, you know, for integrations, it doesn't really matter that much because like, you know, when you put like the integral of V0 to pi, it doesn't really matter for the integral whether pi was included or not, strictly speaking, but yeah, like theoretically, yes, it is in included, that's good. Um, any other questions? So, the other thing I was going to show you, like, and now uh, for this, I'll just write the formula in a second. Uh, is that if you remember for setting up a triple integral, uh, let me put it here. For setting up a triple integral in the integration, you'll see something like dv, right? dv is, is like dc dy dx, right? That is how dv looks in Cartesian. 
if you switch to cylindrical, cylindrical, uh, I mean, it was a, lot, uh, a while ago because we had the exam on Wednesday. So this was a, an, exactly a week ago. But if you switch to cylindrical, which is just polar in, in, in three dimensions, the y dx becomes r dr d theta, right? So in cylindrical, this looks like r d z d i d r d theta, right? So there will be a formula, which I'll write in a moment, for what the volume looks like in spherical. But the idea is that, you know, in spherical, like the pieces of volume. So here, like the pieces of volume are like cubes, like in Cartesian. In, in spherical, the pieces of volume uh, kind of uh, look like what you see here on the animation. So again, like we won't, like I'll give you the formula for uh, one of these things, but I'm just kind of to, just wanted to let, let you know how it, it kind of looks like um, on an animation because it's kind of like, you know, it is, um, it's just a, a different thing. It's not a, it's not a cube. Uh, it's like a, a piece of a sphere basically. Um, so you, um, so that is uh, important to know, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll write the formula in a second. So before forgetting uh, about this, let me just write the, the thing that I just mentioned that, so the, the angle theta, so theta, So the theta determines the quadrants. That's how you should think about the theta being used for. And uh, phi determines whether you are on above or below the xy plane, whether the point is below or above the equator. So phi uh, determines the if you are, if you, or if the point is above or below um, the equator. Uh, by equator, again, I mean the, the xy plane. Okay. So for the quadrants, you need 360 degrees. And for the above or below the equator, you need uh, 180. So that's why uh, the bounds are chosen this way. Now, what I was saying, uh, like there are some formulas that relate x, y, z to rho, theta, and phi, um, which will be given to you in the final. So you don't have to memorize them because they are a bit confusing, but just to kind of show you where they come from, uh, you see here is the R from polar co uh, from polar coordinates. So you can imagine just like dragging this uh, segment along these two lines. So you get a, a copy here of R as well. If you, you see, like I just moved it up. And if you do that, then um, you have a right triangle here. And so just by basic, Trigonometry, that's, uh, you know, the sine of phi would be R over rho. And that gives you like the formula for R in terms of uh, rho and phi. So one of the key formulas in, um, which relates all these variables is just that, um, I'll put it here because it's a very important in, in its own box. So it's just that R is rho sine of phi. Uh, yeah, this one is weird. Oops. Okay, that is the one of the most important formulas um, um, to if you were to memorize them, because again, they will be given to you, but it's still kind of useful to try to memorize them. And so the sine of phi is for R, and then if you Look at this uh, right triangle that we have here. Let me. Um, let me put it with a different color. So this side of the triangle is R, and what is going to be this side of the triangle? That's just Z. So 
what uh, the other formula says in spherical is that um, the cosine of phi is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of phi is z over rho, and that gives you a formula for z. So uh, the other formula that's really, really important is that c is um, rho cosine of phi. And with these two, you basically can figure everything out. And I'll show you how to do it uh, with a an, an, uh, useful table, um, which again, will be given to you. But uh, these are really the two key formulas. And after, once you know these two, you can really like uh, deduce the rest, which is what I'll do uh, for you uh, in, a, in a moment. But is that making sense how I got them? So it's just like from this right triangle that you see here. So again, I'll emphasize the, the 90 degree angle. Is that okay? So let me draw the table, which uh, make the table for you, which is really important. So here is, um, let's put it like this, Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. Cylindrical and spherical. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So we know that the X variable in Cartesian, what is in terms of cylindrical? Cylindrical just, okay, what? Maybe I should say this. Cartesian just means, Cartesian means that you're going to use X, Y, and Z, right? That's what using Cartesian coordinates mean. What does cylindrical coordinates mean? It's like doing polar, right? So it's R, theta, and Z, because in cylindrical, you leave Z on its own. So cylindrical just means, right, everything in terms of R, theta, Z, and what the spherical means, spherical means write everything in terms of rho, theta, and phi. Okay, so that is the difference between the three coordinate systems. So that's what it means to use um, a coordinate system. It's either x, y, z, r, theta, z, or rho, theta, phi. So one of those three triples. So for example, in Cartesian, right, and you have the variable x, which becomes r cosine of theta in polar, right? If you If you remember that. But what does X become in spherical? So that is where the key formula becomes useful because you can use this same formula by replacing rho R with rho sine of phi. So if you replace R with rho sine of phi, you get rho sine of phi, right? That's just like a proxy for R. And then cosine of theta is cosine of theta. That's fine because theta is allowed in spherical. So that's how you get that X equals rho sine of phi cosine of theta in spherical coordinates, which is confusing to memorize. I mean, it can be tricky to memorize. Uh, so that's kind of one way to find it. So, so the useful thing to do uh, in this type of problems is to first determine the relationship between r and rho and, and phi. And once you do that, then you can turn, like, you know, you can switch, you can get like the formula, the correct formula in spherical pretty easily. Um, does that make sense how I got this? So, let, let's do the other one. So y, what is y here? y is r sine of theta in polar or cylindrical, which is kind of synonyms for us. Okay, and so how do you, what is this in, in spherical, just replace r again. So if you use a more magic formula for r, you get rho sine of phi. Uh, so it becomes rho sine of phi sine of theta. So if you were trying to memorize this, you, the way you would memorize it is that in spherical, y is the one that has the two sines multiplied, and in, in x is the one that has a sine and a cosine. Uh, but that's, um, that's kind of how it looks like. And then what happens with the coordinate z? Um, so Z is just itself in cylindrical. There's nothing that you have to touch. And in spherical is precisely the other key formula that I wrote. 
So it's just rho cosine of t. Is that making sense? Um, and then uh, the last thing that we need from um, in this diagram, which is like the important thing for, for um, you know, for calculations with integration, is what is the formula for dv? So the the like again, this means like a very small piece of volume. That's what goes inside the triple integral. So dv in and Cartesian is what I wrote before. It's dz dy dx. So you get dz dy dx. And dv in cylindrical is just replacing dy dx into the polar version, which is r the r d theta, and that's how we get that. So you get um, r dz the r d theta. Okay, and uh, this one is harder to find. So essentially, the way you have to find it is uh, there is a version of the Jacobian. If you do remember, like the topics of the Jacobian, which we had also discussed a, a while ago. Um, there is a, a format of the Jacobian that works for um, coordinates when you're changing three coordinates into three new coordinates, and that involves a determinant of a three by three matrix, which we are not getting into, but I'm just saying there is a way to find all of this stuff from that, uh, which is on the book in case you want to read it. Uh, and if you do that, then like what you find is that uh, this is row squared sine of phi zero, d phi d theta. Which again, like you don't have to memorize because it's given to you. Uh, but at least, let me see if I can move this a little bit more. This is a better answer. So, yeah, I don't know. So many words on this one. So, so here's a way to think about this. Again, uh, any of these represents volume. So it has to have units of length cubed. So this is length, length, length. That's why it gives you length cubed. Uh, that's dimensional analysis, right? Uh, then this is length. The R is length. There's no units to theta. So you get like length squared from these two first variables. And then you, when mul multiplying by R, you get an extra unit of length. And that's how you get to length cubed on this end. And for volume on, on the spherical side, you know, D rho is kind of like a small piece of like distance or length. So this is length. P and theta being angles have no units. So you only have a uh, length here. So to get to volume, you can you need to multiply by rho squared because that's basically the unit only unit in spherical of uh, this with uh, units of distance. So rho squared with D rho is what gives you uh, length cubed was kind of like something that you cannot get from dimensional analysis alone. And that's what you do need like the formula of the Jacobian is that there should be like a sine of phi as well. So that's not obvious from the formula because sine of phi also has no units. So it cannot be accounted for if you do dimensional analysis, but at least you can predict that there should have been like a row square here just based on what the units should have been like. Yeah. Um, are we in this class or are we always going to do row, like integrate row first and update it last? Uh, yes. Uh, so usually I'll, you'll see in the examples, uh, the data, for, like the only problems we'll do in this class just for simplifying our lives are sim as, uh, what they call sim uh, symmetric, meaning that it is kind of like a solid of revolution. So when that happens, like finding data is super easy. So data, like you could put it anywhere because it doesn't really kind of matters where it is because the equations will be independent of theta. So really like the only two interesting integrals for the type of problems we'll do in spherical are for uh, the bounds for rho and p. And for that, it is better to do rho first. So we'll just do examples where like rho first goes well. Um, because you'll see in a moment when I uh, tell you about it, that integrating rho first is kind of like integrating with respect to r first in polar. So d rho d phi is kind of like an analog of d r d theta in polar. So it's uh, uh you'll see it from the from some of the examples in a minute. Uh, but that is a main idea. Uh, is, is that okay? So again, like this table will be given to you, so you don't have to memorize it. But it's still, you know, once you do it, uh, use some like something like this. Uh, it's, it's still kind of useful to maybe write it down on a piece of paper for you, like when you're working out problems, to have like a, a quick reference to this. Um, so, uh, 
what I'll do in uh, maybe what I should do first is just like a couple, a few examples of how the equations look in the three coordinate systems, just to you know, compare contrast, and then I'll do like uh, some problems where like we set up like the integral and all that stuff, so that you see how that uh, uh, looks like. Is that okay? Any questions? Uh, any other questions up to now? Okay, so here are some uh, examples of equations. I'll try to keep this uh, uh, um, around for a while. Oh, I know that is kind of uh, necessary for what we did here, but another key equation, uh, which I had written before is that rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's also another one that's very useful to like keep him, uh, That one's another uh, one that's very useful to also re uh, remember. Uh, so again, that's kind of like the analog of R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. It just has like a third entry because it's like the 3D version of R. Okay, so these three are kind of like the master equations and then the others kind of follow very easily from them. So just to give you like some, uh, some few cases of like how the equations uh, look like in the three coordinates. Here's like uh, an, an easy one, like um, let's start from like basic ones to more complicated ones. So, so uh, a basic example would be something like the sphere, um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared, right? So this is like a sphere of radius a, okay? So what is, and so this is in how you would write this in partition, right? Let me, um, what would the equation of the sphere look like in cylindrical? X squared plus Y squared just becomes R squared, right? So R squared plus Z squared equals A squared. That's how it would look in cylindrical, right? And then how would this look like in uh, spherical? x squared plus y squared plus z squared would become rho squared, right? So you get uh, rho squared equals a squared, uh, which uh, this can be simplified more easily by taking square roots on both sides, right? Because like rho is always not negative for us or uh, rho equals a. So this is how uh, the equation would look like in spherical. So that is a semi like sphere, but written in three different ways, right? Um, Uh, here's another one that's very common, which is uh, which you'll see a lot of the times in triple integrals that we'll do. It's like the same sphere, but just shift it upwards by a the radius. Uh, so let let me do the two spheres first, and I'll then like I'll erase this to move to the other ones. So let's put like let's just shift all the the entire sphere by an amount a. So that would be x squared plus y squared plus z minus a squared equals a squared. Okay, so that is how uh, this equation would look like in spherical. Sorry, in Cartesian. Oops. Now, um, how would it look in cylindrical? In cylindrical, it just, uh, you just replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. So in cylindrical, it just looks like r squared plus z minus a squared equals a squared. Uh, 
And then how does it look like in spherical? So there are a couple of ways to do that, but you can start from um, from the version. So I'll let me put like a line here because I'll do some work to show you how it looks in spherical, but it's like a useful exercise. So to switch it to spherical, um, okay. You could use that R is rho sine of phi, right? So that would become rho sine of phi squared. Rho, sorry, rho squared sine of sine squared of phi, right? That's what happens to R if you use that the first like equation uh, that I put um, inside the box. And then how do you what do you do here? Okay, for, let me just expand this out first because it's actually a bit easier. Okay, so that is how the second term looks like, which, um, you know, the A squares will go away. And then what you can do to Z is, um, you know, replace it with the other one, right? With the second equation in the box. So this would become rho squared times square of P plus, uh, what is Z squared? It's rho squared times square of P. Mine, uh, okay, and then the A squares went away, away right, because there's an A square on each side and it kind of makes sense to move this to the other side because it's like that way it appears with a positive sign. So you get two A, Z, but Z is like rho cosine of P. Okay, everyone with me? So far, um, and then what can we do? Uh, this still can be simplified a bit more, right? If you factorize the row squared, right? If you factorize row squared, you get sine squared plus cosine squared, which we know is one. So you just get row squared equals two a row cosine of p. And now there's a row on both sides of the equation and you can get rid of that one as well. And that's the most you can simplify. So let me use a different color to emphasize that that's kind of like the most simplified version of this equation. So this, here in spherical looks like rho equals two a cosine of phi. That is how the equation looks in spherical coordinates. Is that the is that the difference? Questions about this? Um, okay, so then um, let me do a few more. Uh, come translations between the, the different, like the different coordinate systems are kind of like different languages, right? So you're just translating the equations from one language to the other. So what what is another uh, very common thing that appears uh, in all these problems are cones. So cones, let's just work out some basic cones. Uh, well, the cone of the parabola, because again, it's kind of like nice to see how they look like in different coordinate systems. So. The standard cone is um, something like z equals um, uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. That's in Cartesian coordinates. That's how it is written in Cartesian. Okay. Uh, then how how is it written in cylindrical? So in cylindrical, x squared plus y squared becomes r squared. Right, and then you take square roots, and so you just get z equals r. So it looks like z equals r in cylindrical. Is, is that okay? And then um, how does this look in spherical? Again, like sometimes to find the equations in spherical, you do have to do some a bit of work. So you'll see kind of it's kind of uh, interesting what happens. So in spherical, what is z? You go to do that thing again. So that's rho cosine of p. And what is r? r is rho sine of p, right? The rows go away. So you get cosine of p equals sine of p. 
right? And so when is the cosine equal to the sine? Uh, again, the angle goes from zero to pi, right? In spherical, uh, the phi goes from zero to pi. So when um, is like uh, sine equal to cosine um, from zero to pi, it's just that pi over four, right? So phi equals pi over four is the entire equation of the cone in spherical. So let me put it that again in color to emphasize this. So. So the equation of this cone in spherical is just phi equals pi over four, because what that means is that the cone is consists of all the points at an angle pi over four from the North Pole, which makes sense if you start thinking about it. So, uh, but it, it takes some time to get used to it because it may look a bit too simple, you know, but the cone is supposed to look nice in spherical, so that's fine, but, uh, Yeah, uh, for those. Is that making sense, kind of? Okay, what about the paraboloid? Okay, let's do the paraboloid because that one is a good one. And also a very common one. So this is a paraboloid. The paraboloid is z equals x squared plus y squared, right? So that's in Cartesian. And then uh, what is in cylindrical? Again, cylindrical is just like doing polar. So it becomes z equals r squared. That's what it becomes in, in cylindrical. Which uh, kind of also explains a bit more like the meaning of the word paraboloid because this is the equation of a parabola, right? Where the variables are z and r. So it really looks like a parabola if you draw like a z r plane, and which is something we'll do in a bit in like three minutes once we start doing like integration for this type of problems. So that is like one of the reasons why, you know, the image is called a parabola. Um, and then the the last one, which is spherical, what happens uh, for this equation in spherical, you have to do, again, like the, you see why the, these boxes are so useful. You have to change them using that. So that becomes rho cosine of phi. R squared becomes rho squared sine squared of phi, right? And then, uh, you like, as I mentioned here, like we will integrate integrate first with respect to rho. So it's convenient to solve for rho in this equation. So to solve for rho, uh, you know, you can cancel like a rho on both sides. So you get cosine of p equals rho, rho sine of square of p. So the equation for rho is just uh, the one that you obtain by divide after dividing by sine squared. So the equation for rho here is that rho equals cosine of p over square of p. So that is a paraboloid uh, in spherical coordinates. So this is the paraboloid in spherical. Does that make sense? Uh, maybe just two more, uh, because after these two, like really all the problems are a combination of the ones that I just drew. So all the problems you'll see, like for triple integrals, involve one of these, basically. At least when it comes to cylindrical and spherical, there's nothing else that you'll see. So the next one would be a cylinder. Uh, and again, like if you see all the pictures I'm drawing have some symmetry about the c-axis because all the regions of integration that we'll do in cylindrical or spherical have like this symmetry, meaning that if you rotate it, 
or if you rotate along with respect to the Z axis, you see the same, right? So it's kind of like a solid of revolution, which is how uh, they're also called. So the other one, the, the, the last two that I'll do for you, which are kind of the most important ones uh, together with the previous um, uh, surfaces, is the cylinder of uh, a cylinder of radius A, something like this. Like. So that is a cylinder of radius A. It's just, okay, it is a circle of radius A on the XY plane. But if you remember um, what I've told you, it becomes a cylinder, right? Because you just drag it along the Z axis and that's how you generate the cylinder. So that is how the cylinder looks in Cartesian. Okay. Uh, how does it look in cylindrical? It just means uh, one more time, to switch it to kind of polar. So X squared plus Y squared becomes R squared. So you get R squared equals A squared, which is the same as R equals A, right? Because uh, when you take square roots, like you can just keep the positive solution. Okay, so or R equals A, and that's in cylindrical. Is that, is that making sense? And then for the version of the cylinder in spherical, well, you, uh, do is again use the boxes so you can say that r what is r is rho sine of phi right so you get rho sine of phi equals a and this is the equation in spherical but uh, typically for the integration purposes we will solve for rho in all of these problems so when you solve for rho you get a over c over sine which is the same as a cosecant so rho equals a over sine or a um Cosecant, that is the cylinder in spherical. And the last one that I wanted to do, because it's like the last type that tends to appear in these problems, is um, the plane, like a plane like of constant height. Also, I don't know if you have noticed, usually the way I have it written these equations are Cartesian followed by cylindrical followed by spherical, because usually it is easier to rewrite the equation going from cylindrical into spherical than just going directly from Cartesian. To spherical. So of course it's possible from going from Cartesian to spherical, but it is a bit like you know less cumbersome if you kind of go first through cylindrical. So that's another reason why I have kind of always be, been putting cylindrical in the middle in between the two because going from here to here is a bit a bit more uh, more tedious. So. So the last equation is something like a plane of constant height. So something like Z equals A. So that is all the points that whose Z coordinate equals A. And here's like the height A. So this is like how it looks in Cartesian. How does it look in cylindrical? Exactly the same because Z remains Z in sphere in cylindrical. So it's the same in cylindrical. And how does it look in spherical? Well, in spherical, you replace Z with rho cosine of phi. And so again, like that's the equation of the plane in spherical, but we want it in terms of rho because like that's usually how it will look like in the problems of uh, integrating um, 
uh, regions. And so it's all for row. Uh, when you solve for row, um, you let me put it in color. You get row equals a over cos cosine of t. So you get which is a secant also. So all the triple integrals and cylindrical or spherical will involve some combination of the previous, I think I did six, right? Two sphere, play para uh, paraboloid, uh, cone, and then cylinder plane. So like there were six surfaces, basically, yeah, like all the problems will be like some rearrangement of like of the six of sorts. So that way you have like have all the basic equations like in the three coordinate systems. And it does allow you to see like the differences between them. Um, now, and for, I'll now tell you how to integrate this stuff. But are there any other questions? Okay, so how what, how are we going to set up the triple integrals? Um, as I was saying, for this type of problems, we'll just uh, work with problems that have certain symmetry just to make our lives easier. So we'll do triple integrals when there's uh for the case. So let's do uh let I'll tell you how to do triple integrals in in cylindrical or spherical. Uh, when the region of integration has um, a symmetry in the theta variable, when there's symmetry. So what do I mean by symmetry? Because like that's a word that uh, gets overused a lot of the time uh, in many problems involving uh, integration or physics problems. Symmetry means here that the equations that define the region do not depend on theta, okay? Uh, so in this case, what you'll see is that we'll draw a, a cross section of the region on the R Z plane. So what we'll do is draw a cross section. On, on the RZ plane. And the cylindrical bounds, the bounds for in cylindrical are determined uh, using um, vertical arrows and the bounds in spherical will be determined using um, radial arrows. So, so the cylindrical, let me put it with a different color. So, so like the cylindrical bounds will be will be uh, using vertical arrows and that so that is similar to like the order uh, dy dx and the uh, spherical bounds will be determine using uh, rays or radial arrows.
And I like in polar, okay? Like in polar. Uh, so, okay, I did this, uh, need some clarifying, so I'll do some examples to show you what I mean. So, and now the recitation this week, you'll uh, see on our... A bit more problems on this stuff, but uh, let's see. I'll set it up just for purposes to simplify our life because again, doing the integrations, uh, they're not as different of what we have doing before. We have been doing before, so like uh, finding the bounds um is really the most important thing. So let's say okay, let me give you an example here. I'll start with the somewhat easy one. So So uh, let's set up a triple integral. For um, in spherical and in cylindrical and coordinate in cylindrical and, co and spherical coordinates, cylindrical and spherical coordinates. And what is R going to be in this case? Uh, the region of integration, the region R is the stuff inside, the stuff or the points inside, inside the unit sphere. Not, not the unit sphere, um, like the sphere of radius root of two, you'll see why in a moment. So we're looking at all the points inside this sphere, which are also above the plane, um, the plane Z equals one. Uh, so for these problems, it's uh, really important most of the time uh, to re uh, minimize the level of risk, to just draw everything out. Like that's usually the recommendation for all these integration problems. So so what is the sphere? The sphere is... Uh, that I'll do it in yellow. So it's like a sphere radius root of two. Right. So that's, that's a sphere which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals two. And like thankfully we can just like you can just go back to the stuff that I did earlier. Like you already know how to rewrite this in either uh, cylindrical or spherical, right? So if you want this in cylindrical, that's r squared plus z squared equals two. And if you want this in, um, you know, in spherical, it will give you rho equals root of two. That's how, um, that is how it looks in Cartesian, in cylindrical and spherical. Is that, is that okay? Because in, uh, in spherical, it makes sense that it's rho equals root of two, because I'm just saying the sphere are all the points whose distance to the origin is root of two in this case. So that is what the third equation means. 
and the planes equals one, uh, planes equals one is in here, right? Okay, so it's kind of like you have, uh, think about it, you have a, a sphere and you kind of like uh, make a plane go through it. So you're looking at the stuff above the plane and inside the sphere. So the region of integration is this stuff in blue. Is, is that making sense? So the triple integral is taking place over this blue stuff. And by the way, how is this in, in spherical? In spherical, again, remember this is rho cosine of phi equals one. So in spherical, this is rho equals one over cosine of phi. So uh, those are the equations in, those are the equations in, um, In cylindrical for the sphere, a spherical, cylindrical spherical for the sphere, a cylindrical spherical for the plane. Okay. Okay, so what do you see here? Uh, the, the idea is that if you look at the equations, they don't depend on theta. There's no theta here, there's no theta here, there's no theta here, there's no theta here. If there's no theta in one of the coordinate systems, there won't be a theta in the other because theta is present in both. So the moment you see that there's no theta in cylindrical, and that tells you that there wouldn't be a theta in spherical as well. But the point is that since there's no theta in any of the equations, like this region is really like has symmetry with respect to the z-axis. So one way to think about it is that if you start rotating the entire picture about the z-axis, it looks the same, uh, which hopefully it's kind of plausible in this like region. So just imagine grabbing the sphere and the plane and uh, rotating all the stuff about the C-axis and you know you wouldn't notice any difference, uh, which is different, uh, you know, you know, it would be different uh, that from, uh, let me draw something that wouldn't have symmetry quickly so that you see like the difference. Like, if I had like, if I had placed a sphere, if I had like the sphere somewhere in here, right? And you start rotating this about the C-axis, you would see like, a, you would see the difference because like the sphere would start going through like the different quadrants, right? Whereas in here, like it does nothing, nothing happens to it, okay? So there's symmetry. And again, all the problems in cylindrical or spherical that you need have symmetry, will have symmetry. So there's uh, symmetry with respect to theta. So in that case, uh, what the what I was telling you said is that instead of like looking at the 3D picture directly, which you can to set up the bounds, but it can be a bit more confusing. What you can do is like draw like a cross section. So what you have to do now is imagine that you're going to cut kind of like the region with a plane that looks like this, like kind of like in this magic tricks. So you got the region with the plane like look like looks like that, and you'll see a cross section which. Uh, is just, uh, well, what I'll show you in a moment. So in the cross section, you'll see, um, the way we're drawing it is that you'll, draw, you'll still draw the z-axis, uh, but then uh, you'll the second axis uh, is just r, the, the r from polar. Okay, so for example, When you when you draw the like the sphere, you know when you draw the sphere because it only depends on r and z. That's why you can draw the sphere there, the equation. There's no theta. That's why it's important for there to be no theta so that you can actually draw the the, the sphere there. So when you draw this on on the on that plane, you just get like the equation of a circle, right? Uh, oops, let me let me draw it a bit better.
Um, I'm just drawing half a circle because strictly speaking, R in polar, we don't use it for negative values. So if you wanted, you could draw the full circle, but you only need this piece of the circle uh, because in polar or uh, yeah, or cylindrical R is always uh, not negative. Okay, and again, this is like the same as row equals root of two. And then uh, the plane, pl the plane z equals one. In 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 on this plane, it's just like y equals one. So you just get here z equals one. And so the region of integration that I'm referring to is this blue region. So what I was saying is that if you look at this blue region and start, you know, rotating it about the C axis, right, by two, uh, two pi radians, you will recover the entire uh, original volume. So this is kind of like a cut, a cross section of this uh, volume. And the, if you start rotating this, like as a solid of revolution, you would uh, recover like the entire uh, picture. Is that? Okay. Uh, and so what's the cool thing here? So if you want, like, let's do first, like the problem in cylindrical to show you what happens. Um, I'll do an, an example, another example next time when we start uh, on Wednesday. Um, but Uh, okay, so the function was this. That's what I was trying to integrate. So it becomes x squared plus y squared is r squared. So the function in cylindrical is r squared plus d squared, right? So when you do the triple integral, the function is going to be r squared plus d squared. So sorry, I'm going to do cylindrical first just to emphasize this. So this gives you r squared plus d squared. And if you remember in, c in cylindrical, dv is r dz dr d theta. So you get, uh, let's see, R, DZ, DR, D theta. Okay. Much of it. Uh, but then uh, if you look at this integral, what that means is that you would integrate first with respect to Z and then R, like the way I'm writing it, and DZ, DR, this EDR in this plane looks like dy dx. You see, like it's formally the same because like this EDR, z is like playing the role of y and r is playing the role of x. So writing this EDR is kind of like writing dy dx here. So that's why to find the dr bounds, you can just find like the bounds in the same way you would have found like the, the yx bounds before. And for that, and that's why I was saying that you could do like um, vertical arrows because that's the order dy dx, if you remember from before. So if you move vertically, what is the lower bound for z? Is z equals one, which is what you see here. And what is the top bound for z? It would be the equation of the circle, right? Uh, the equation of the circle, you solve for um, z in this. Uh, let me just, maybe just ignore the arrow for a moment. So you solve for z and you can say the z is like plus minus root of two minus r squared. So the top bound for the circle should just be z equals root of two minus r squared. Is that making sense? So that, those are the z bounds. But my point is that you, you are kind of finding them in the same way that you were finding the bounds for double integrals. It's just that with different number, names for the variables. So it's like a double integral problem because of the symmetry, it collapses to a double integral problem just with different names for the axis, okay? And then uh, what are the R bounds? The R bounds is like finding the X bounds in this picture. So how would you have found the, you know, the X bounds here or like uh, now the R bounds? So like, you know, R in this picture goes or X, right? Would have gone from zero up to this point of intersection, right? That's like the biggest it would be. Uh, what is that value? That is where the two lines, in, like that is where these two curves meet, right? So that will go from, uh, you know, you need to equate the two. So you put like um, root of two minus R squared equals one, because that's 
you know, when the two meet. And so you get two minus r squared equals one, or so, so one equals r squared, so r equals one, because like, again, um, r is always not negative here. So this goes from zero to one. That's the bounds for r. Is that okay? Is that the best? And for the last part, which is the easiest, so is what are the theta bounds? The theta bounds are not shown in this picture because this is kind of like a cross section. So the theta bounds is just uh, the amount that you need to rotate this to recover the entire solid. So like the rotation that's needed of this piece is like 360 degrees. So usually like the theta for this type of problems, we just go from zero to 360 or zero to pi over two, if it's just like a, a quarter of the solid or something like that, but theta is just zero to, to pi in this case. So this is just like how much you have to rotate the cross section, how much you need to rotate. Okay, so that is how the, the triple integral looks in cylindrical coordinates. Now I'm going to do it in spherical. Um, yeah, only like five more minutes and then we're done. But um, are there any more questions, questions before I proceed there? So let's talk about this in spherical. So in spherical, what is x squared plus y squared plus v squared, uh, well, it becomes rho squared. So the function f is just rho squared. And remember the, the piece of volume in spherical is rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, so it becomes um, rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, so let me do the cross section again. Um, I'll do the same picture, but uh, like I don't want them to get confused. So it's the same picture as before, but I want to find the bounds in for the spherical thing. Uh, this is like r square plus v square equals two, which is well. I mean, we already had had like this equation before. Like the equation of the circle is rho equals root of two and the equation of the plane, right, was um, rho equals one over cosine of phi. So now uh, what I was saying is that you to find the bounds in spherical, you kind of find it in the same way that you did in polar. In polar, we did this ray, we drew this race. So now in spherical, you draw this the same race. Um, so now draw the race exactly the same way as in polar. So you see like the rays enter through the plane, right? So the rays enter through the plane, which is rho equals one over cosine of phi. So that's the lower bound for rho. And the top bound for rho is the, the circle or the sphere. So it's rho equals root of two. Which is the thing you would see here. If you kind of drew rays from the origin in all directions, you'll see that the rays enter first through the plane and then exit through the sphere. It's just that it's easier to kind of see like the reduced version on, on the plane because that is like, you know, uh, like a 2D picture versus the like the actual region, which is 3D. Um, is that making sense so far so good? And then what are the phi bounds? This is where you have to be a bit careful because remember the phi in the spherical starts at the Z axis, like at the North Pole. Okay, so the phi bounds, is, um, you know, the region includes the North Pole or the positive Z axis, which is at phi equals zero. So it really just start at phi equals zero in this picture and you drop down, 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 down until this point, right, where the two curves meet. So phi goes from zero.
to where to the point of intersection between these two curves, which is when does that happen when the row is the same value to ro root of two equals one over cosine of P or cosine of P equals one over root of two, which uh, you should recognize that it's pi over four. So the P goes from zero to pi over four. Which, you know, if you were doing this with the state, like, you know, if you thought about this as a polar problem, like from before, you would have said, oh, the angle goes from pi over four to pi over two, right? Because like in, in polar, like we are moving up, like, you know, towards the North Pole or the positive axis, vertical axis. But here we start at a positive arc vertical axis, and then we go down. So that's like the major difference in terms of the angle, not to get them confused, because the angle in spherical starts at the North Pole and in polar starts at, at, at the equator. But if you keep that in mind, then, then there's like really uh, not much of a difference. And lastly, the theta is just from zero to pi because it's the same as before. So again, like the theta never gets seen from, uh, from these cross sections. So I'll put it maybe in words here. So theta is not in this picture. So there's no theta in this picture. In neither of the pictures, there's a theta. Theta is hidden. Theta is not in the pictures. Because the theta is kind of like representing the angle of rotation that's needed. So that the, you know, this coordinates, like you're looking at a cross section where like the other variables uh, that you have to see are, uh, R and D or rho and C. Okay. Um, so I'll do another example of this sort uh, on Wednesday, but the idea is always like draw them, like once you have a cross section, you draw them vertically for cylindrical and then draw them radially for spherical. And so it becomes like a regular double integral problem that we were doing before. And that's nice, that nice thing. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'll see you on Wednesday if there are no other questions.